last time, I harvested some chlorella algae and made an extract out of it. And in this video, I tried to make biodiesel out of that. Spoiler alert, it failed miserably. However, I encourage all of you to stay tuned as I'll be going through the process up to this point and we'll also go over some of the mistakes I made and ways I could improve the process. So without further ado, let's get into this episode of doing it ourselves. For the past six months or so, I've been researching and developing a process to turn algae into fuel. And I've been documenting this through a short series demonstrating each step. So far, I've shown how I start my algae cultures and how I grow them under various conditions. We've taken a look at how to harvest algae from its culture media. And we've also taken a look at soxoth extraction as a method of extracting lipids from algal biomass. In this episode, I move on to one of the final parts of that process, or at least try to. Yeah, it doesn't go well, but I digress. The oil I made during the last episode I figured needed cleaning up as it contained lots of pigment impurities among other things and it also smelt pretty bad. The pigment impurities made it practically opaque and you'll see why this isn't ideal later on. I tried to mitigate these issues via re-diluting the extract with ethyl acetate, mixing in some activated charcoal and filtering it. However, this didn't really do much other than introducing another impurity, being the activated charcoal, and also some metal acetate, which I will have to boil off again. So it wasn't really worth the time and solvent, and now I have some little carbon particles floating around in the mix. Yay. From there, I kind of just decided to screw it and move on to the reaction. What we're supposed to be making is biodiesel, and this requires three things, your oil or lipids, and alcohol, methanol and ethanol are the most widely used, and a catalyst. Sodium hydroxide works fine for methanol, but potassium hydroxide can be used with other alcohols like ethanol or even higher ones. I'm using methanol as my alcohol because it's the easiest one to get to react. We have our extract as our oil, and we're using potassium hydroxide as our base catalyst. The reaction that's supposed to take place is something called transesterification. Layman's version is the chemical equivalent of having an affair. The nerdy version, well, under basic conditions through a series of mechanical steps, a less reactive alcohol is kicked off of a fatty acid molecule, which is replaced by the reactant alcohol, which is often more reactive. The alcohol being replaced in biodiesel production from lipids is called glycerol also known as glycerin. The main product when methanol is used, for example, is a mixture of molecules called fatty acid methyl esters, the most common type of biodiesel. Using ethanol instead of methanol will afford ethyl esters instead. Other fatty acid esters exist, but they, as of now, have limited usefulness as fuels. Anyway, before I could do anything, I first had to boil off all of the remaining ethyl acetate, as with it being an ester, it would probably significantly interfere with the reaction. When I felt I had boiled off all of the solvent, I moved on to the next step, which was preparing the reactant alcohol and catalyst. Because this experiment was so small scale, I couldn't practically weigh out the potassium hydroxide flakes. So I picked up two flakes of KOH and placed them in a small vial. It's okay to do this if you're quick about it, as in cold solid form, Alkalis are much less reactive than if they were in solution, especially a hot one. Next, I added methanol to the vial, capped it off, and started shaking it to get the alkali to dissolve, forming a methanolic solution of both potassium hydroxide and methoxide, which exist in equilibrium. Pure alkoxides can be attained by reacting alcohols directly with alkali metals. After the methanolic KOH was added, Stirring and heating were turned on, and this was left to reflux for a couple of hours. Along the way, I added a co-solvent, heptane, to help dissolve the lipids and make them more available for reaction. It was important that I used something that wouldn't react, like a hydrocarbon, 
as using something like ethyl acetate would interfere due to causing side reactions. However, in the end, because of the dark coloration from pigment impurities, which, spoiler alert, there were a lot of, in addition to trace amounts of activated charcoal, it meant that even if I could get some layer separation at the end of the reaction, I wasn't able to physically see the layers at all. This meant that if I had made biodiesel, it was going to be absolute rubbish because of all the impurities, and it also meant that I was unable to separate any glycerin that formed. So the only thing to do was to evaporate all the solvent from this mixture to yield the final product. If you decide to do things this way, I strongly advise you have adequate ventilation, although this was just a demo. It's much preferable from a safety and also solvent recovery standpoint if you instead distill the solvents and reuse them. After evaporating all of the methanol and heptane, I was left with a thick, dark, tarry mass that probably had some severely degraded lipids and also possibly some biodiesel. However, when I tried to burn it, it just didn't combust at all. What you see here is just the isopropanol burning, which I used as a kind of initiator to hopefully get it going. But unfortunately, after that ran out, combustion completely stopped. So this very clearly wasn't a success. However, I have a few ideas on how I think I could improve things in order to increase my chances of successfully producing biodiesel from algae. So let's dive into that now. Firstly, what I want to say is I think that the failure of this experiment is down to mainly two things, which are the pigment impurities and the fact that the sample I was working with was simply so damn small. And it was so small that it was impractical to work with. On top of that, I kind of have a hunch that during the extraction in my last video, I was extracting a lot more chlorophyll than I was actual lipids, and that the lipid extract I got was simply just a bunch of pigments in concentrated form. So what can we do about these issues? Firstly, in the future, I will need to make sure that any extract I make contains very little pigments, including chlorophyll. They interfere with reactions, they decrease the quality of the final product, they gunk up glassware, and it's all in all just a very bad experience. So that's something I want to avoid. And one way to do this, especially for chlorophyll, is to exploit its solvation properties. You see, chlorophyll is soluble in both polar and non-polar solvents. And so to exploit this, I could actually in the future perform the Soxlet extraction in two steps. One using a really polar solvent like methanol to pull the pigments from the biomass before moving on to the second part of the extraction, which would be using a non-polar solvent like ethyl acetate to pull the actual lipids from the algae. Additionally, I think that the magic bullet blender I was using didn't quite break up the algae cells enough to release much lipids, which resulted in inefficient extraction. There are workarounds to this that I will explore in the future, such as through thermal means and through ultrasonication. Finally, I think in order to do any of this properly, I simply need more biomass and as such, a lot more extract to scale things up to workable levels. This algae to fuel process is something I want to continue improving and updating, and I will continue to make videos about those things. And next time, I will be looking at centrifugation as a potentially quicker way to harvest algae. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you all next time. Bye for now.